Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting the planet Zeva stage from the original Super Smash Brothers. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Like I normally do, I've sketched in what my plan is, but unlike my other sketches where I'll use color pencil or leave it blank, um, I decided to try watercolor pencil and adding water. But it backfired on me because I wasn't using a non-soluble pen. I used a black pen that was water soluble. So once I got some water on it, it just bled and kind of messed everything up. But you can kind of see what my plan is. Um, there's going to be a space background, that's where the blue is. And then there are these black spires that come up and they're very dark. Um, there's some lights on them but um, I didn't worry about them right now. And then it kind of comes down and fades into this acid pit. And then floating above that is where we have the actual stage with these platforms on top. So I'm starting with that space background and I'm going to be using some Dogzine Purple, some Cyan, some Titanium White, and some Carbon Black to fill that in. So I'm gonna put some of these on my palette and start applying it. To do my space background, um, the first thing is it's only gonna be the top half of the canvas. The rest of it covers it up so there's no point in painting it any further down just because the acid's going to kind of come up this far and those spires are going to cover a lot of it. So I'm only doing the top half. Second, I'm not using a paintbrush, I'm using a sea sponge and I've gotten it wet and wrung out all the water from it so it's not dripping at all. And then on my palette I'm going to tap it into those colors I listed and then tap it here on the canvas. Normally, I don't know if I've done a good job until after I add the stars. It really adds a lot and brings the whole thing together. So to do that, I'm using Golden High Flow Acrylic in Titanium White, and it's very liquid. It's almost like ink, but um, you could use a soft body or fluid acrylic. Um, I just wouldn't use regular acrylic and water it down, then it won't stick. Um, but you want to make sure you shake it up really good to make sure the pigment is dispersed evenly throughout the liquid. And then I just put a little bit on my palette and I'm using a toothbrush. And I'm kind of scrubbing it flat along my palette just to get a little bit here on the bristles. And then I'm going to pull back the bristles and then let go. Um, and it's kind of different every time to see where they end up from where your brush is. So you may have to move it closer or turn it at an angle. Um, but just play around with it and you can add too much. So once you think you're at a good stopping point, maybe stop, walk away for a little bit and come back and decide if you need any more. But um, you don't wanna add too much. You just kinda wanna go and do a light coverage of stars. I'm painting over the bottom with solid white to do the acid later. Um, so I thought I'd show you some different things you can do with this technique. Um, if you get real close to the canvas and kind of angle your brush away, you can kind of do these little like explosion things. It's kind of hard to control, but um, it also kind of gives this really unique um, randomness to it. Um, and I kind of like how some of them started to look. They look a little bit more like a spiral galaxy inside the rest of the painting. If we look back at my sketch, we can see where my next layer is. And it's these tall spire things that kind of fill up the background. So I'm going to mark it in with chalk pastel and then fill it in solid black. I drew in this curved line and I made sure I measured it so it was equal on all sides. Um, and that it curved kind of at the same rate. And I did that because each one of these spires, um, the negative space kind of comes down further and further on each side. So it looks like it's kind of surrounding this pit of acid. So I wanted to make sure that they equally came down on both sides. Now I can start to sketch in where the negative space is going to be.
These spires aren't flat black. Um, they kind of round as they go towards the space area, and it looks like ultramarine blue. Like it looks like it came straight out of the tube. It looks so close. So I'm going to lay down some ultramarine blue right on these edges all the way around, and I'm going to fade it back into the carbon black as I get closer to the middle here. They also have some lights on, but I want to worry about this blue first so it can start to dry. This was looking really good until it dried. Um, when it was still wet, you could still see it was ultramarine blue and it was really pretty and it was just what I wanted it to be. But when it dried, it totally faded and I can't even tell it's blue anymore. The only way I can tell I actually did something is ultramarine blue is kind of matte compared to the carbon black, which is a little bit more glossy. And it's not blue at all here in person. And I think the camera might be showing it a little bit more blue. Um, and it's probably because the lights are at a different angle than I am, but it's not working at all, so I have to fix it. And I should have known it was going to do this, but I really didn't think about it. I just thought ultramarine blue is perfect, let's use it. And the reason is, is on top of each tube of the paints I buy at least, they do a little swatch of the pure color. And underneath it, there's some ink printed in lines, so you can tell if the paint is opaque or transparent. So like here's Mars Black and you can't see the lines at all, so you know this paint is very opaque. And also on the back there's a little chart that talks about some different qualities of the paint. Um, it still talks about how transparent and opaque it is, so like the Mars one, there's a slider and it's all the way on the opaque end, and on the ultramarine blue one it's not as far towards that. It talks about how matte or gloss a paint is. Um, the body of it, if it's kind of thin or if it's a little bit thicker, and then the tinting strength. Um, like black would be a high tinting strength because it's going to push any color really quick into black because it's really strong tinting. If it was low, you'd have to add a lot of it to change it that color. Um, so the ultramarine blue kind of fits on a different scale than the carbon black, and it's kind of like using some clear cellophane that's blue on top of the black. It's just really, really hard to see. So the way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to mix up some of the ultramarine blue with a little bit of titanium white, which is a very opaque color, and it's going to kind of show up here on top of the black. Once it dries, if it's too bright and I don't like how bright it is, I'll just use some ultramarine blue on top to kind of hide that brightness. Because it's so transparent, it'll just kind of push it down and make it less bright. The lighter ultramarine blue really did the trick. Um, at first I was worried because it was a little too light, but then it dried to the perfect color. So I'm moving on down to this acid, and I need to blend yellow into black, and that tends to turn a little bit green, so I've done quite a few tests in my sketchbook. Um, on the left of the page here, I used pure color and did some washes across the top to kind of visually mix to see what would happen. And I'm not super fond of any of them. They kind of still got a little bit green no matter what I did. Down here I did the same thing, but instead of letting the yellow dry and doing the black as a wash, I just did it wet and wet to blend it right here on the piece of paper. And you can see just how green they are. All of them ended up very green between my primary yellow, um, cadmium yellow, and the cadmium hue, which is a synthetic cadmium. So over here I decided to try mixing the yellow into a different color and then blending that color into the black. So I have an orange I made, um, yellow ochre, and then burnt sienna. And I like these, but they just don't really feel like they're the acid. So I decided to try like a light yellow, um, which is this yellow with white, mixing it into the black just straight as it is. And because there's so much white in it, it turns gray before it turns green. So this is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to mix up a light yellow, fill the whole base with it, and then fade it into the carbon black around that curve. I redid this transition between the black and the acid just because it felt kind of messy and sloppy, and that's not how I like to paint. So I cleaned it up by doing the black, fading into a lighter yellow, and then I did just like a nice straight line of this light yellow. Next I'm starting to fill in the details by using some titanium white, 
and I'm just putting a little bit on my brush and kind of zigzagging it around this area. I'm trying to keep the white kind of contained here where it will be underneath the stage, and I'm gonna bring a little bit of orange to the areas on the outside. The next thing I can do is add all the lights in on the spires. So I'm gonna do it first in chalk pastel just to make sure I like where they are. And then I'll switch to a paint marker, which is just liquid acrylic in a paint marker and go back over my chalk. And then I can make them red, green, and violet. Everything got marked in with chalk pastel and it took a little bit to get it exactly how I wanted. And I was struggling with this bottom platform and I thought I should just probably put it in perspective and do it in a one point perspective. So I made this bottom left corner of the top platform my vanishing point and then I had these lines line up to that and then everything on the tops of these little paths, like where all these lines are, they all point to that same spot. And it really helped me out to figure out where things should go. And then I took a white paint marker, um, like this one, and I just outlined everything down here, filled in these top platforms, and once this is dry, I can erase all the extra chalk so it doesn't confuse me and start to paint things in. I blocked in the bottom platform and I started to bring in some of the planes to show you kind of how it curves like going across the entire thing and it's starting to come along but it definitely needs a lot of work yet and I'm glad I started it because you can see a lot of the acid through it like it's showing through the paint because it's kind of transparent so it's going to need multiple coats to get completely opaque so this is just the first coat and I'm moving on to these floating platforms and I've taped them off just because I really want to get some nice straight lines and I'm working on the top platform first not the vertical part and I'm going to paint it kind of a light blue green color and do like this highlight down the middle of it going this way and then I'll take the tape off and then look at details but this part I kind of want to be able to be messy with it and go like outside of the lines so the tape's going to help because I can just peel it off and it'll stay in that area. I'm starting to do detail work and on top of these platforms it kind of has this cross hatching in a darker blue green than the base color I did. So I remixed up the blue green but without any titanium white. I've taped off the top and bottom of it and drew myself a guideline right down the middle of the platform this way. And then I'm taking that dark blue green and I'm going to start painting all of these diamonds across the top. The tops of these platforms are done, um, I just need to do this part that hangs down and it's kind of like a moss or something that holds these red spheres in. So I'm using a dark cadmium red to paint all the spheres first and a pure cadmium red to do the highlight. With the 
highlights done on these bubbles, I'm just taking a small amount of light green and I'm going to go all the way around them and then wherever they're not but it's still part of this like drapery part, I'm going to use a little bit of that to give it its own highlight. The main platform down here has a really different texture for rock, and it kind of reminds me of how I do the galaxy with the sponge, so I thought, let's try it. So I taped off the whole thing just so I wouldn't mess up anything else, and also when you're using the sponge on it, it's really hard to get nice perfect straight lines. So if I use the tape, I can go a little bit on top of it and just peel it off and it'll be nice and perfect when I'm done. Um, so I'm going to use some of these same colors and maybe lighten it up just a little bit and use the sponge just like I did for the galaxy and start to tap in some of the colors. I like the texture that this has made, but I think it needs a little bit more work yet. So I redrew in the planes because I have to like clean up these lines and make them a little bit sharper, and I also want to push the contrast where I lighten the lights and darken the darks. I'm happy with how the texture turned out and I want to do the path next, so just like I taped off the outside of the floating rock, I'm going to tape off the path too. I used the vanishing point for the one point perspective to start to fill in where each of these tiles of this path are going to go. And I've mixed up a new light gray green color and a dark gray green color to do all the value on this. The texture of the path is something called diamond plate, and it's something they put on steel or aluminum to help improve grip for like your shoes or something. And I see it a lot on pickup trucks and like semi trucks. Um, and the way I'm doing it is there's alternating diamonds going vertical and horizontal across the surface. So all of my vertical ones are going to go to the vanishing point and my horizontal ones are going to follow whatever square it's on. So like this square right here, they're going to go horizontal, but here they're going to go diagonally down. And I'm going to use a color, um, the same color as the path. I'll use the dark color in the light areas and the light color in the dark areas. The next part of the path are some lights that go on each square along the bottom and the top. And they kind of just fill a little bit out um, and they're kind of like this oval white shape. So I'm going to fill that in for each one of these boxes. The first detail I'm doing are these cones that are in different parts of the stage. Um, and based upon where it is and where it is on this rock platform, it changes where its bottom part sits. So here it sits at an angle, so I've drawn it at an angle. And then here it's horizontal, so it's horizontal um, for the line. And then I used my T-square to draw vertical lines up from each of those areas. And then I'll just use a ruler to kind of bring down each part of the cone on the left and the right.
The next thing I'm working on is the maps. So I took a chalk pastel and drew it in first and then I used the white paint marker and now I'm going to go over the top of it with a yellow. I filled in the inside of the map part black, but the yellow is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to tone it down with a black wash. With the glaze on top of the yellow, it really helped bring that down a little bit and draw less attention to it, because it's really not the focus of the piece, and so I don't want to draw too much attention to it, but I definitely want it to be there. Um, and then to finish up these maps, I've mixed up kind of a darker gray, and I'm going to do the detail on the inside. Basically, all of the rooms kind of get a smaller box inside of the lighter gray, and then all of the tunnels get these vertical lines going down them. Once that's done, there's a few lights that light up inside, and I'm just going to add them like I did the ones in the very background. The housing for these lights is kind of a greenish blue color, but I didn't want to use like a pure green blue out of the tube because it just would be too bright. Some of the things I have are kind of bright, but they're all the way up here. Everything that sits on this platform is pretty desaturated. So I mixed in a little bit of red to that green and I'm going to use black to shade and then white for the highlights and fill in all these housings. I did a base color for the edges of the light container, um, and then after it was dry, I drew in the details with chalk. I also filled in the actual like bulb part of the light with titanium white, and then faded it into a lighter version of a color um, across the top. So like this one's green, this one's blue, and then this one's pink. Um, so next I'm going to add the details to the walls of this container. Um, on the very like middle of like each piece is going to be lighter, so I'm going to use a light version of the color for the base. And then right in the middle here on the chalk line, I'm going to use a dark version of that. So everything looks kind of rounded in each space. The last bit of stage detail is the part that hangs down here. So I've taped off the top so I don't lose anything I did up there, and I've drawn in where the bottom is going to go. So I'm going to start by filling in a base color, which I think I might do a little bit lighter than this now that I've seen this here on the canvas for a while. And I'm going to fill in to all of these points, and then I'll start adding texture by taking a darker color and kind of tapping it in with a small piece of sponge. And we're done! We have Planet Zevis from the original Super Smash Brothers. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting. <laughs>